again and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. And we both, this is not planned. I thought, oh, I hope we're both not in crazy prints or something. And then you had like the beachy look and I got the beachy look. So we're obviously our brains so, so, are on the beach. Uh, first of all, I actually have white pants on too. Yeah. So I am just going with the forget about Labor Day, no yeah. white after Labor you Day white rules. shoes on. I thought uh, it was just shoes. And... Um, and beachy because I think we're both in denial mm. that it is now becoming yeah. fall into I love, winter. I love. I do. I don't mind this time of year. I hate weeks like this where it's just cold and rainy. Yeah. You know, and when it rains and things get wet, it, even when it's sunny, it's not warm enough always to dry them out. So now's yeah. when you have to be careful with your outdoor furniture and all that good stuff. Anyways. Yeah, and my hair clearly. <clears throat> I don't even try anymore. Um. Couple things I did. Um, so Tammy's gonna lead this because I yeah, clearly I didn't even fine. bring my book. I didn't put my rings on. I did do yoga oh, and I did you. some meditation and I did the vibrating machine. Um, <laughs> I, wa I wanted to fill pe tell people. Um, so you know how there's Friends of Stark Park up in the North End for the which they've done an amazing job. Stark Park was always the park along um, River Road, you know, with all the statues and everything. But then Friends of Stark Park expanded it because there were um, trails that had been overgrown and they've really done such a wonderful job. Um, Dan and I, I think we might've went in the spring, but we haven't been in a long time. Maybe we'll go in the next couple of weeks before it gets too cold. Um, but it's nice and it took an, or an organization and they work in conjunction with the city and they, you know, they raise their own money and they have their own group of volunteers and things like that. So over in our neck of the woods in West Manchester, um, Barbara Charette, who lives up on Tondro Court, which is a cul-de-sac off of Mast Road, her property in the back butts up with what is the Piscataqua River Park, which is that area from the George Smith soccer fields, the path that goes over the little br br over the Piscataqua River, and then continues on up to Electric Street where the ice arena is. Um, that's all city-owned park, and it is an actual park. It's just unfortunate that it's not really, there's not really much done with it. Uh, 10, 15, 20 years ago when we had all the big flooding in Manchester, I believe it was, um, don't quote me on this, Army Corps of Engineers that came and built that wooden bridge over the river and those soccer fields had to be completely redone. So like it has been improved, but like I said, that might've been 20 years ago now. Um, so her concern was, there was a lot of homeless starting to creep mm. up into those woods. And it's concerning when you're up, at, you know what it's like, at the top of the hill when there's, you know, villages I mean, I've walked that Piscataway yeah. River Trail at least three times a week. Right, and it's... it's I a, can tell you where exactly every camp is yeah. or where they've decamped right. and just and left just their left crap. So that's what she said. They're like, the, oh, volunteers can go do things, but there's only some of this oh, stuff... Oh, we do it. Some yeah. of it needs to be done... By, by the professionals, city. <laughs> like because it's 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 concerning. So, anyways, um, she got a bunch of people together, and we met last week, and we are um, forming the official Friends of Piscataqua River Park, um, and filing papers to be a five hundred one c three nonprofit, nice. so we can raise money. Um, had a really good productive meeting. I think we're gonna. Um, I think we're doing a small cleanup on October first, engaging with the st parks department to try to make sure that things are done. You know. The bri we, you know, the bridge. What, why this and not We Heart West, which is well, already we doing well, it. No, it's, it's just, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. No, um, actually, Mari Fontaine from We Heart West yeah. was there. Okay. Um, it's just a different group with different focus. We Heart West is more about cleaning up, just cleanups. This isn't just about cleaning up the park. This is about actually maybe establishing more of a um, park like what is up at Stark Park. So uh, it'll have a long term. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm not saying well, We Heart West isn't long term, but it'll be a bigger project. Um, it was interesting. Mm. So, um, anyways, th I thought that was good news. It's nice to see see stuff like that. Um, working on bylaws, I dance as I volunteer to do too many things, and that's fine. <laughs> um, I can work on things like that. I like things that I can work on on my computer when I'm like in quiet time in the morning and stuff like that. Um, so, anyways, as we get things going on that, I will fill in more on that. Um, so I don't know, is the subtext I'm hearing, I don't know why my ire just went yeah. up, but I'm like, so should I stop picking up the trash no, no, in no, the no, Piscataway no. River Park? No, no, no. It, I mean, <laughs> it, like literally the first project, I, I said clean up because I think that's knee jerk. The first project that they're um, on the 10th they're hoping to work on is clearing the overgrowth near that handicapped, 
you know where the aluminum handicap bridge is right at the beginning of the trail closer to soccer you might not even be able to see it because oh it's yeah all, i know exactly so clearing where. that yeah. area and then i haven't i'll be honest dan takes jenny through there more often i haven't been through there um cutting back near the wooden bridge so that they're you know, like you got to start it's got to be reclaimed it's more um i would think it's less clean up and more maintenance maintenance like clean you know cutting back and then working on you know can we get some benches in there you know like because it is true the more part the more parks are used by people the less yeah. chance of people setting up encampments you know what i mean but if it's just a trail through the woods which is what it feels like now rather than a true park that's where they go uh yeah uh all right it's never it's volunteers. It's great. If it gets no, I think that that that's great. I I just guess uh, it feels like oh, this is a duplication of efforts. No, I think but maybe it's, it's I think not. it's not. It, I think there could definitely be overlap, just like there's you know overlap with uh, like Riven Heights and We Heart West. There's two groups, but they work together. You know, they might be doing the same thing in different times. Um, but we did. It was nice. Mari was there, and she did talk a little bit about We Heart West and how what they you know that they're doing. The, I think it was last week was the last park cleanup i think mm, saturday they did one and saturday, then that there's one I'd more like neighborhood cleanup so i mean there was you know a handful of people at this meeting who probably didn't know much about we heart west so it's kind of a good i think it's good um speaking of homeless and the river <laughs> i read an article on sunday and it kind of got my ire up because i was like geez you know this isn't really right so colonial village which i drove by this morning because i had, i knew where it was but i wanted to see how close it goes to the river colonial village is up off of river road very large apartment complex um west clark and above and it goes back quite a you know a few blocks deep and it eventually there's the fence to colonial village then there's the railroad tracks and then there's a narrow strip of land between the railroad tracks and the river well, there was an article in Sunday's paper that um, the the owners, um, it's a trustees entity that of Colonial Village, are upset because when they when the city of Manchester cleared out the homeless encampment under the Emmascake Bridge, and I'm presuming this is the one that the city of Manchester established for the homeless. Oh, they established it and then left it, gave them porta potties, yep. fenced them in, right. and then left it until they almost blew up the bridge. Right, and then they came through and cleared it out. So when that happened, what, hap what ne happens, as we all know, they migrate up the train tracks and find the next parcel of land to lips to build their encampment on. Well, apparently in behind Colonial Village, it, the strip of land between the railroad tracks and the river, there was a homeless, larger homeless encampment. Um, it doesn't seem as though it's an active encampment right now, but it's covered with trash because mm -hmm. unfortunately, you know, it, the, the people who are the woods dwellers, I don't know what to call these people, the people who are living outdoors by choice, because some of these people are choosing not to get services or whatever, and they live out. If they were just living in a tent and when they move on, they just packed up their tent like we do when we're camping and moved on to a different area, people probably would be a lot more tolerant of their existence. But every place that you ever see somebody home, I don't even want to say home. I feel like we lump all the homeless together. The these ch people who are choosing to live outdoors, they leave these filthy messes behind. It's it's just not okay. I mean, partly that could be. I know, for example, that the police were out uh, last week because there were several people living uh, behind Gosler yeah. and Parkside schools on the school property. So we had put in a ticket. We had one officer come maybe yeah. like a month ago. Uh, those people moved on. I, I'm pretty sure based on the videos I've seen, I know where they're living now, <laughs> which is down on the Piscataway River. Um, but then another group came in and one of the ladies from down next to the park, yes. actually, you know, we've been texting about the community center and um, she was like, oh, people went in here again. The police are here now. Can you tell us where they are? And we were like, they're, you know, they're the two yeah. benches, the, the 
concrete benches and there's a path up and they literally set up their camp on the path and so i think the officers might have said to them you know you have to clear out yeah. and so i think what happens is because they're forced to clear out maybe they are just forced to kind of leave their stuff maybe. right but it just seems like but it seems like even that is counterintuitive because i know for myself when i run into people on on the trails you know i'll have conversations although there's like one dude who lives down at the Piscataway River Park, where last week, I mean, I'm sorry, I saw his bum. Yeah. And literally, I'm not yeah. calling him a bum. I saw his, his bum because he was naked. And I don't know if he was um, forest bathing <laughs> for some vitamin D, <laughs> but, but he was in fetal not, position it's, it's, on this rock. And I was kind of like, not sure I really want to see that right. out on my morning right. stroll either. But... Um, but so I think there's a bit of, so anyway, when I run into folks, I'll talk to them. I'll yep. be like, what's your story? What's going on? Whatever. And I'll always say to them, hey, guys, like if you just actually bothered to keep this area people, clean, people are le- I'm probably less going to not you right. know, call in a ticket because, right. you know, I'm not really a fan of making this the city's problem. No, but here's the thing, though, Tammy, and, and you know, I... I it's, it's fine, like we criticize this, but a lot of people will contact me and they're like, what's the solution? Right, I, right? I'm not claiming to have all the solution by any means. And I don't really know. I mean, it is a tough nut yeah, to crack. It totally is. To figure out how to unbum the bum. <laughs> but, um, but I mean, one idea is to create a area like the city did, but preferably not you know, under a bridge somewhere. <laughs> yeah. You could blow up the bridge. I think a perfect area would be the Sununu uh, Youth Detention Center over there on the north side, just right next to beautiful Stark Park. There's land there. Why don't they designate an area and say this is where you? Well, can I'm gonna bend. I'm gonna argue, say the reason will be is that land was. Um, oh no, given. the reason will be Martha's Vineyard no, will be the reason. That <laughs> land, if I'm not mistaken, was given to the city for the benefit. To be used for children. Don't quote me on that. But I'm pretty sure that's part of the reason why nothing ever happens other than the youth detention. Oh, they're going to so, close that and send, I'm just sell saying, it to a private contractor. They, you heard know, it here but, first. And um, when I'm right, I'm if right. If we're looking for spaces, it's not in Manchester, but I don't, I'm not saying just, what about all the um, vacant space at what used to be the women's prison in Goffstown at the town facilities up there? Mm. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm not saying make them in. Th- those facilities still exist because the question becomes i mean so so they're camping on public part of the part of the hard nut to crack here is the fact that we're dealing with public land so we are trying to make private property solutions work right Mm. so these people are just saying well it's everyone's land so i can camp here right but it's like well but i pay taxes so that i can walk on the piscataway river park without having to fear for my life get stabbed to death uh, you know, whatever the issue is. So, you know, I, I, I feel like, uh, so I know by, so, go ahead. Oh, no, I just want to, so this property up here, so now the city is um, going after Colonial Village apartments because apparently the strip of land between the river and the railroad tracks is owned is part of Colonial Village's property. Oh, wow. Now, okay. they claim they didn't know that that was part of theirs, which wouldn't surprise me because it's... I drove down there. We're talking a very narrow strip. We're not talking a big, long field or anything. Um, so just keep in mind that Colonial Village pays almost $1.5 million in property taxes to the city of Manchester. So they're paying their part. They recently spent 158000 to do new sidewalks and curbs in that neighborhood, which I know... Be- before I even came back to my notes, when I drove through, I was like, wow, these sidewalks are all brand new right up to right up to River Road, which I presumed meant they did them, which they did. Um, the city now is saying it's their problem that there's all this mess from the homeless on this strip of land between the Merrimack River and the railroad tracks because they own the land. But the, the Colonial Village is like, hey, you pushed them there. You, you know, you're, you're sit, the city's whatever is what's causing these people to deposit themselves on private property. Then there's a huge cleanup mess. And, and, and now you expect it. And then um, from what I'm reading, so they're citing them. They're, 
The, um, wow. There are ordinance violation cit citations. Um, the city has issued six separate ordinance violation citations under Manchester's littering ordinance and threatened the trust with a $1,000 per day fine until Colonial Village Realty Trust cleans up all the trash from the homeless camp. So I'm like, this is like the guy with the Cracker Barrel sign. He just owns this land that the Cracker Barrel billboards on. He doesn't live in Manchester. He had no idea there was a, you know, this swath of homeless people leaving trash all over his property. And then he had to spend something like ten thousand dollars to have it cleaned out. And this is the same thing that Colonial Villages have now be facing. And I'm like, but see, this is the problem. And, it's and not ask just yourself in that scenario, right? So you're you're actually punishing. The tax-paying, yes. productive, useful yes. uh, business. They've been there for trust. 50 years, and I just drove uh, through So you're that. punishing them at the expense of subsidizing this problematic behavior yeah. that causes human rot. Yeah. So, I mean, what are private property owners to do? Are you supposed to have armed guards on your property to make sure there's I no mean, homeless? I mean, that's what we do in real third world I mean, countries. So the question is, does America want to become a socialistic I, third world country? Or can we do better work, and go back to the things that work? I work for a small manufacturing company, um, J&R Langley, right on South Main on the corner, practically on the corner of Varney and South Main. And we have this teeny tiny little bit of land behind our building that goes down to the Piscataqua River that we had to spend thousands of dollars recently to pay a company to come and clear it out of human debris yep. because you can't possibly go in there and clean it out and cut it all down so that the, the people that were living there are a little less likely to come back and live there anymore. So I'm just hearing about more and more private businesses who are having to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to clean up the mess of the homelessness. And I'm not saying Every single homeless person is responsible for every single mess. But the city, for the city to be fining people is a little much. Can I fine the city for not cleaning the streets? Because I'll tell you, Colonial Village Apartments, those little streets in their neighborhood looked much cleaner Christine. than the streets yep. on the way back here to downtown you know, Elm Street. So, and I mean, the city doesn't really clean Varney Street. There, there's weeds growing out of the sidewalk, trees growing out of the sidewalk, and I'm like, okay. And I, I kind of got my ire up even with the Piscataqua River Park project, and I'm going to try not to be so critical, but it is a city park that's not been maintained, right? The yeah. bridge in that park should have always been maintained. So they did fix the they've pedestrian. Con, they've gone and done things, but I... Well, but, last week yes, they fixed that's the what pedestrian bridge because, uh, there I mean, like, that, there was like a nail that yeah. I actually was like, ooh, do I need to buy there were our, like three bar, three. orange spray paint and come yep. spray it? There are a couple of roots now where actually yesterday I didn't, <laughs> I did a bit of a plant. Uh, um, but, you know, like one of those like yeah. crazy stumbles where you're like, ah, and I barely landed on my face and I was like "Ooh, I should come back with the orange yep. spray paints and just at least you know because the trails are being used more yep. it's it's really beautiful down there it really it's, a, is. it's it's an incredible asset for the west side that's partly why we do yep. go and you know we we've done several yep. litter pickups there over the years um, so I was really happy when I saw, oh, they, they actually fixed that pedestrian yes, bridge. They did. It looks like a piano now because with uh, the, the, yes, the there's boards good ones, are, old ones. Well, and the I boards mean, are different colors. If it so takes an organization to be, if there's people in uh, the Friends Piscataqua River Park that have a good working relationship with the parks and that gets more maintenance done, that's a win. Well, just I think all right now we're seeing two things. There's more maintenance because it's election season and the city does like to actually do things for the two months leading up to the elections. That is just a fact. There is also an insane amount of funny money coming in from the yeah. federal government. All these grants, all this free stuff. Oh, we're yeah. going to do this. I mean, that block party we had with, with Rock Rimmon, it was really nice. You know, they closed down two streets. There were yeah. porta potties. They had to pay the cops a fortune to like be there. You know, it, I, but, but it was just, I mean, frankly, I mean, it was a bit of a waste of money. Yeah. Yeah. And they literally only did it because there was this funny money and yep. they were like, oh, we got to spend it. So let's spend it. And I'm like, 
the, the reality is, and what folks back home have to understand, there is no such thing as free money. So when these grants come through and people are like, oh, we're just going to spend, we're going to pave the West Side Arena, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to throw these parties because we have to spend the money. That is why your gas is expensive. Yes. That is why your groceries cost double what they did. I mean, it's ridiculous did you see that interview with uh, the 60 minute interview with biden no dan watched part of it i he said it was highly edited and i'm, I'm sure i'll watch it i mean one I, you know i also f uh, candidly only watched some clips you know and i'm sure they picked the clips that don't make him look good but you know I read an article this morning where they were discussing what happened to the uh, misinformation and misleading claims fact checkers. I don't know if you've noticed, they're all kind of gone. Oh. Because if you were to fact check the, that comes out of Biden's mouth, yeah. including, oh, the inflation rate is zero? Right. He said that last month. I mean, it's bananas. I mean, yes. Anyway, um, I digress. <laughs> on the subject of elections, um, last week, week was primary day. Um, there wasn't, I mean, there were f state and federal primaries, but pr predominantly in Manchester, there weren't a whole lot of primaries. I think there was one primary on um, the west side, floaterial for state rep. For, on the Republican side. So what's happening in Ward 5? That's the Bulldogs Ward. Oh, I'll come Ward. back to that. Yeah. Hold on. So there were two um, two current Democrat sitting reps that were unseated in their primaries. Mm, I, I, think the, was, I think the Democrats are going to have so their Josh, bombs Josh Query in Ward 9 lost his um, seat in the primary, and they had a recount, and he continued to lose. And Diane Langley up in Ward 1 um, lost to Christine Siebert in primary and there was a recount. Um, I think there's still a recount pending on that. Mm. But So I just thought it was interesting. I'm like, oh, what's going on? But speaking of what's going on, so this is a weird thing. So in Ward 5, which is the inner city, um, there are two state reps there. It's around Creamland. That's how I remember it. Yeah, that is good. <laughs> Um, not because I love ice cream and like Creamland <laughs> up to Merrimack. So it's, it is inner city for the most part. Some of it is across off of, um, Gosh, is that Candy Road over on the other side? It's you don't it's, expect it's, that. It's, it's anyways. It's weird. So they, they their current state reps, uh, Amanda and Andrew Bolden, husband and wife. Um, Amanda, they're both Democrats. Amanda moved here as part of the Free State Project. Um, so there. Mm. Um, but anyways, Democratic Free State. I didn't know. Um, so in August. With no no explanation that that he's required to, uh, Andrew Bolden resigned his house seat, which I thought was odd because Andrew Bolden is on the November ballot. ballot, and I thought, well, that's weird. Why would you? Why does? Why would somebody resign their uh, their seat in August and then be on the ballot in September and then again in November? So. Um, I'm not sure what that's all about. There is a Republican running in that ward, so you'll have options. Um, I think it's important that people realize that Andrew Bolden resigned his seat, so they probably shouldn't vote for him in yeah, November. Yeah, it was weird. I, it I was had a couple peculiar. of people message me, and they're like, ooh, what's the scoop? And, and just to be fair, I should say that Amanda, uh, uh, you know, is now a hardcore part of the Democratic Party. Yeah. I would, you know, she would say she's not a free stater anymore. So because, but, you know, what does free stater mean? It means you're an individualist who wants small, limited government. It's as simple as yeah. that. You know what I did last week? I thought it was hilarious. I got no likes, so it must be on the suppressed, uh, deplatformed, uh, you know, list of stuff. I just tweeted out the NHGOP platform, and I yeah. was like, "Look at this extreme radical stuff." Yeah. Most of, and I was like, everything I mean, in the platform oh. is so so very basic so not well, but it's it's basic but it's literally you know everyone's like oh the free staters the free staters and i'm like thing. oh wait i'm sorry we stand for school choice mm -hmm. more choice in everything lower taxes <laughs> i don't know every single thing you might call the new hampshire advantage or new hampshire values is what free staters stand yeah. for so if everyone could just stop with the nonsense well i but would that, appreciate but, that but they're not gonna because the no, Democrats because everyone's are, like a boogeyman. Well, that's exactly it. I was watching something else. Um, I think it was on Tucker Carlson. It might have been Dave Rubin. I don't really know. Um, they were talking about fear tactics. And oh, Bill Clinton was interviewed. And Bill Clinton's like, look at the Republicans using scare tactics, tactics and saying that if you don't um, if you don't elect Republicans, there's going to be inflation and all this stuff. And I'm like, 
okay, but that's actually what is happening. <laughs> but then see, on see, the flip the, side, that's what the Democrats do. The Democrats scare people. Like, the, well, right they now, lie. Well, I mean, honestly, the ads that are out there currently that are running from Pappas and uh, probably Hassan yeah. uh, regarding the abortion stuff it's against Carolyn right. Levitt and Don yeah. Bulldog, are just, it is rank BS yep. is what it is. They are literally lying. So for folks back home, here's the only thing you need to understand about the abortion issue. No one took our rights away as women. That is nonsense. If you hear someone say that to you, they are lying to you. Here is what happened. The Supreme Court rightly said this is an issue because it's not in the Constitution. <laughs> no. Show me the words. You can't. Okay. So it's not in the Constitution. So the Supreme Court of this country said, huh, we kind of screwed up. It really isn't there. How about this? We'll just say it devolves down to the states. Every state can decide for themselves. Right. That is a good decision because that means the power is in the hands of local control yep. as opposed to some nut in D.C. Okay, so every state gets to decide for themselves. And in New Hampshire, abortion is legal up to 24 weeks, which is, by the way, longer than any civilized Western country in Europe. So not actually that great. And it is legal. So every time you see one of those ads, you need to tell yourself, these people are lying to me. They are straight up lying lying to you because that, but, but that's the game plan i noticed it i saw um ray buckley tweeted something and it was like rovember the rovember <sighs> because it, the republicans are going to make it so that and i'm like first of all but it's their only issue it is yeah. literally the only thing they can do well, now and they can't even do that honestly because you cannot vote for these they people. just have to scare people because they can't talk about the economy. They can't talk about jobs. They can't talk about anything. So they're going to say uh, the world's going to explode because of, of climate change. We need climate action now. And women are going to become, you know, I don't know. Handmaid's Tale. Hand, the Handmaid's Tale. Because that's a picture that <laughs> I watched the Handmaid's Tale. Trust me, it's the women just as much as the men in that show. But anyways, um, we're getting the warning that we're almost out of time. Um, Maybe next week I'll come back with a better list of who's running in the city. Um, congratulations on the Republican side to Don Bolduc and Caroline Levitt. Um, Michael I and Michael Yakubovich is our state senate yes, candidate. Yes, I got the name um, right. <laughs> and that's in, um, in Manchester Ward One. And then hooks it. Oh, I can't get it. Hooks it. Raymond, Goffstown. In some other town. I can't keep them straight. But remember um, to vote for me and Tammy. Yes. And all the Republicans. For that and matter. all the Republicans. If you're, if you're in doubt, just go down the Republican list and check them all off because that helps. That'll too. be better than what you get when you don't. Um, we are out of time. We will be back next week. Maybe not as beachy, but we'll be back. Um, <laughs> Maybe I'll get a haircut before yeah. then. <laughs> uh, get out there and take a walk, even if it is rainy. And we will see you again next week. Bye. Take care.